All right, welcome to part three. Glad you're still with us. So we're at getfedora.org or fedoraproject.com, if I remember right. Um, there is a variety of distributions for us to try here. There's Workstation Server, CoreOS, Silverblue, and IoT. Since I'm assuming you're going to be running this on your laptop or desktop, and you'd like that nice fancy user interface before you really dive deep into, you know, essentially running a server distribution with no UI. Uh, let's give our give, uh, give a shot to Fedora Workstation. So click download now. We just want the ISO file since we're going to be trying this out as a virtual machine. Hit download. Now, that said, if you do decide you want to try this out on an actual machine, i.e. you want to put this on a USB drive, boot to it, and wipe out the operating system or what have you, um, you can always do that from here. I would caution you, as a new user, you may choose to wait a while before you try before you dive into the deep end. Um, I'm not saying you're not going to enjoy it. It's just you're going to have to spend the time to get used to Linux, whatever distro you choose, find equivalent applications, because let's face it, you're not going to have Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. You're going to have GIMP. Inkscape, those kind of tools in Linux land. You're going to want to get used to them and then actually transition over if you choose to do that. Uh-oh. That wasn't good. All right. Download has resumed, and with the magic of editing, I'll see you guys in a few moments. All right, welcome back. Our download has completed. Let's get rolling. First up, open up VirtualBox. Hit new. We're going to call this Fedora Learning Linux Series. As you see, since I put Fedora in the name, VirtualBox automatically goes, OK, it's probably Fedora 64 bit. Hit next. We're going to go ahead and give this 8 gigs of RAM. Now, this is subjective. It depends on what your machine has. If your machine has 8 gigs of RAM, I don't recommend giving all 8 gigs of your RAM to the virtual machine, of course. Um, pick something that's suitable based on what you have. I happen to have 32 gigabytes of RAM. 8 gigabytes of that won't hurt me. All right, we're going to go ahead and create the virtual hard disk now. We're going to select VDI. Next. Dynamically allocated or fixed size. Um, there's kind of a couple of different trains of thought here. Dynamically allocated is if you're running short on disk or if you, if you don't have that much disk to spare. Dynamically allocated will grow on your file system as your virtual machine consumes more disk space. Fixed size will actually create that entire um, file of whatever size on disk all at once. Um, in the land of virtualization, it's known as thin provisioning versus thick provisioning. Um, dynamically allocated would be thin, fixed would be thick. Um, generally speaking, fixed size is good if you have concerns um, about disk performance or what have you, or if you want to absolutely make sure that at a future date you're not going to run into an issue where you've added so many files on your disk or you've used enough disk that you can't grow the VM anymore and start running into issues. I generally run with dynamic. I'm going to go ahead and give it 28 gigabytes. Why not? All right, now, we're going to do a few edits before we begin here. First things first, I'm going into Settings. Go to System. And you're going to see this allocates one vCPU. Now, I have an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with symmetrical multi-threading enabled, i.e. I have 16 threads or 16 virtual CPUs. Of that, I'm going to go ahead and give four to this desktop environment. Next up, display. I'm going to give 128 megabytes of quote-unquote VRAM, and I'll go ahead and enable 3D acceleration. Storage. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select the ISO that I downloaded. Audio, I'll leave B. Now, 
for networking, I generally prefer bridged. That way it's actually sitting on the same network as my computer so I can, you know, pop in and just SSH to it from any other device on my network. It's kind of a matter of preference. Um, you can even do like internal networks where it's only your VM speaking to each other. Um, or you could do a network where the machine you're running this on can communicate to that and your other VMs, but nothing else can. Totally depends on what you want, but like I said, I prefer bridged. Serial ports don't really matter. And then um, one thing VirtualBox offers is you can actually create a shared folder. And essentially what that is, is it'll be a mount in your Linux virtual machine and it'll be a folder anywhere on your Windows computer and you can drop files into it and magically they appear to your Linux virtual machine. That said, let's hit start. All right, now, if you freshly downloaded an ISO, I recommend doing the test this media and start Fedora install. I normally just go here, but if you're going to be installing this on something important, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your checksums match up. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do things, and I'm sorry about that. Also, you're gonna notice up here, um, the interface for VirtualBox has right control marked. That is, your mouse and keyboard get grabbed by the virtual machine. And if you need to use them in your host OS, hit the right control and that will release it. Few more seconds and then we'll have our nice handy dandy installer up. Of course this is taking forever now that I'm actually recording this. That being said, I'm also running with this assumption that the download is broken in some meaningful way and I would have caught this had I gone into the test and verify. Oh, no, we're in, woohoo! All right, so one of the cool things with the VirtualBox 2 is if you resize the window, Probably not going to happen right now, but once the VirtualBox tools are installed, the resolution that your virtual machine can display is set to the inside window size. So if you grow this bigger, you'll actually get higher resolution in your virtual machine. That said, let's install to the hard drive. All right, so English, continue. We're in Texas. America's Chicago is the same time zone. We're good with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just let this run automatic partitioning for now. goes. It's laying out the partitions as it sees fit. Begin installation and away we go. Now it's going to do a basic OS install with all the baseline packages that we're going to need. It's also going to ask us for a root password and if we want to create a user account. I highly recommend creating a user account and giving it pseudo permissions and not directly logging in as root. Um, that said, if I remember correctly, 
in the land of Fedora, you can still SSH in as root, but I believe it is being discussed that that would be removed. Um, a distro like Ubuntu, you cannot log in as root via SSH unless you go and manually edit the SSHD config to allow that. So I guess that's just a very long way of saying create a user account and use that to log in. I'm also going to spare you guys a little bit of waiting here. Through the magic of editing, we'll be at 100% installed. All right, welcome back. Our installer has completed. Let's go ahead and hit quit. I'm going to go ahead and restart. This is going to hit one of the only things I don't like about VirtualBox, which is we have to scramble to go over here to devices and quote unquote remove the virtual disk. Some distros actually tell you to like remove disk and hit enter. You see I had to do a force unmount. Not mounted anymore. Let's go ahead and reset. And then this will boot to quote unquote disk, so to speak, or to the virtual hard drive. Next, I usually leave problem reporting on. I'm not going to log into our, any of our cloud accounts, but you can if you'd like. And you can do enterprise login if you're running like LDAP or Active Directory or something. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going with a very easy to guess password. And with that, we're logged in. There's all your installed applications. And that concludes how to install Fedora. Next video will be how to install Ubuntu, and then we'll start diving into how to install packages and how to actually make use of your Linux distribution. All right, y'all. See you in the next video.